Retroid is here with a brand new device. This is the Retroid Pocket Mini. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the device, what it can do, does it move the needle for us? We're gonna be looking at emulation, Android games, as well as just test it out and see how this all glass front panel fares and is it comfortable, all that good stuff. All right, let's hop in. Okay, so let's take a look what's in the box. They sent 16-bit. Uh, this was sent over from Retroid for review. No money is exchanged hands. All thoughts and opinions are my own. And the handy dandy instruction manual. So this will be interesting. This is their first device with an OLED screen. Not only this, but also the upcoming RP5. And so we're gonna see what does it do? Does it move the needle for us? I adore the RP2S. It's not one I use a ton because the ergonomics leave a little bit to be desired. And so here we are with another four by three aspect ratio device, but this one actually has a little bit smaller screen. It is OLED. So while it looks small, this actually is a 3.7 inch, a little bit bigger than this 3.5 inch RP2S. All right, and we have a USB-C cable, but this does not come with a screen protector in this one here. If you ordered one, it will be a screen protector that goes all the way across the glass there. Now, while I do have this one in for review, I ordered one from Retroid, the black SFC model. Now on this unit, I do notice that I'm not able to close this perfectly. So I do want to call that out. It's still not flush, but at least it's in there. And again, there are another a number of colors to pick on the website. You can take a look here. So just immediately, this is very much like the RP2S as far as just general feel goes. The D-pad, the face buttons, kind of how that all feels, the joysticks especially. But let's go through each part of the device together. So here are those face buttons. Mushy rubber membrane. Classic retroid pivot on that D-pad, that feels good. Hall effect joysticks here for L3 and R3. And we have two front firing speakers. I always like to see that. Home button, very quiet clicky for the home button. Back button, start and select. Pretty good placement there. We have analog L2 and R2 here. Very quiet. Overall, it feels good. So I mean, again, it feels very much like an RP2S, but this not so ergonomic kind of digs into your hands a bit. There's no bump out. And so now what we have here is not only a more powerful chipset, but we have a ergonomic back there. It's slight, it's not real intense or anything, but it's something, look at that. You do have a matte plastic finish there, a nice big air hole intake, and then minimal branding, exhaust up top, volume up and down, and your power button. We have a 3.5 headphone out down below, and a USB-C out the bottom, which this does support DisplayPort 1080p at 60. One concern people had was this all glass front panel here on this OLED display. As far as fingerprints go, yeah, you're probably gonna see some of that. I mean, it reminds me of the glass exterior on the Microsoft Surface Duo, but not too bad. Another complaint is if you don't have an all black front uh, colorway, you're probably gonna see that this has a pretty big bezel and the screen is not filling up the full display. Uh, so it, it appears to be smaller than it is. And I feel like this maybe could have been maximized to a nice full four inch size, uh, but this is probably just the one that they could get. But I don't mind the all glass front. Screen protector going on here is gonna cover the whole thing. And also we were asked, does the buttons scrape against the glass when you depress them? And let's just take a look right there. I don't feel it and I don't see it doing that, so. Face buttons though do feel very nice. They feel just like the RP2S and the D-pad has a very satisfying pivot to it. I can already tell it's gonna be a great D-pad just like previous, like the Retroid Pocket 4 had and the same joysticks here. So all of Retroid stuff is pretty uniform. These as well are gonna be the same D-pad and joysticks that you see on devices like AYN's Odin 2, Odin 2 Mini. The ergonomics are not bad at all. It's nice and lightweight too. Let's take a weight. 223 grams compared to the RP2S, which came in at 201. A similar size comparison might be something like the Ambernic RG35XXH, but this is just a little bit smaller. 
So maybe something more closer in size is gonna be the RG40XXH. Yeah, that is pretty dead on. Very, very close, maybe just a little taller on the Inverneck. Another device in a similar price range is going to be the Ambernic RG Cube. While not quite as powerful, it does have that ergonomic bump out with a one by one screen. And the last one I wanna highlight that is at least in the same price bracket, but definitely underpowered performance wise is gonna be the Ioneo Pocket Micro. This is a three by two aspect ratio display with a little bit slower chipset inside the G99, but another all glass front. All right, let's turn it on, see what we got. And we have Retroid Launcher or AOSP. I'm gonna go with the AOSP. So taking a look at the software here, we get the usual suspects, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, performance modes, standard performance or high performance. Here's the fan. That is in sport mode, quiet mode, smart. And we can also do a custom slider here. And here's that full blast. We're gonna go ahead and leave it in smart today. Now this also has a dark theme as well, which we're gonna go ahead and enable that. A night light, battery saver, and location. And let's do a quick screen test here. So it gets nice and bright and very dim. Look at that, look how dim it gets. Ah. Yep, we're getting a clean 60 here. Let's go ahead and do a speaker noise test. No sound, nice and clean. That's what I love to hear. The speakers are definitely a little bit tinny. Uh, they sound fine and they do get nice and loud and they're stereo, not too bad. Let's do a joystick test, not bad. Now Retroid's always good about their joysticks. So there we go, we get lots of nice coverage, no cardinal snapping issues. And let's go ahead and test this D-pad. Uh, I've loaded on here Dolphin from the Play Store, Nether SX2, the latest Alpha, PPSS PP, the latest Vita 3K, Lime 3DS, RetroArch 64-bit, and also WinLater. Although we're not gonna be doing WinLater games, I just wanna show you what WinLater is gonna look like on this small of a display. Good old Minesweeper. This wasn't faring so well on the live stream with MMJR2, but with the latest build from the Play Store of Mainline Dolphin 1X looks like is doable here. Smooth as butter. Again, look at those colors though. Look at that. Wow. So far, all the PS2 games have been running full speed at a 2x. Let's take a quick look at PSP. Whoa. Now Vita, I've found to be a little hit or miss on here. Some of the games I've been trying have been crashing, but we're gonna try again and crash. So yeah, unfortunately Vita 3K is having a little trouble on this chipset for whatever reason. Uh, I've tried a few games, same result. I'll try a third one.
And this is running without issue on Lime 3DS. What's great about SNES on here is you're going to be able to load all of your shaders, filters, and go nuts. And let's see how temps have been faring. So we get a 91 on the screen Fahrenheit. And it hasn't been getting too hot. It gets a little warm when you're pushing the higher end, but if you leave that fan running higher in its higher setting, uh, you're going to be just fine there. Battery drain has been fairly okay. Now, I've charged it up after the live stream to 100% and then started testing and filming. And since then, which was about, mm, about an hour ago or so, we are down to 83%. We're getting roughly... I don't know, 10% drain per 30 minutes if you're really pushing it. Well, what did you all think of the Mini from Retroid Pocket? They brought a lot of interesting things to the table here, including their AM OLED display here with that 4-3 aspect ratio, all glass front, adding the ergonomic bump out on there, hall joysticks, excellent D-pad, excellent face buttons, all around, just the whole thing coming together really nicely, but the caveat being that the screen is a little small for my liking, just a little bit. I would have loved to have seen a four inch display on here uh, versus the 3.7, but it is again, a little bit bigger than the RP2S. So really, I mean, what are we going to compare it against? We, we could look at the Anbernic RG406V with its full four inch display. This is gonna be just a little bit bigger, but this is an IPS and pricing is going to be not too far off on these, but performance is going to be better on here versus the 406V with its T820 chipset. It's not going to dethrone the Odin 2 Mini for me from AYN. Even though the screen is a mini LED, not AM OLED, this has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in it and this thing just rocks all the way through. A little heavier, uh, but this is gonna be able to play everything up through Switch. Meanwhile, right now with Android 10, we cannot do Switch on here yet, and six gigs of RAM is gonna be a little bit difficult, but this is excellent, excellent at GameCube and PS2. It's been pretty decent. Performance has been more or less what I've thought uh, for the Snapdragon 865. We saw this performance before in the Pimax portal, and so we're not too far off from there. Gets a little wonky when you get up to PlayStation Vita. There might be some further optimizations to be done here. Do expect OTA updates. Android 13 is coming in October, as well as Linux, Batacera, all that good stuff. And now if you're interested in this, you can pick it up in the description from Go Retroid. and shipping starts this Sunday, September 29th. They're gonna be on holiday and they're gonna pick up shipping after that. Uh, for the price at $200 USD, do I recommend this? I would say, yeah, I mean, where else are you gonna find an OLED 4x3 display? There's just no other handheld that really can offer the unique factors that you have going on here. Lightweight, ergonomic, the fan worked well, the speakers are okay, but overall it all comes together. Yes, the screen's a little small, but hey, get yourself some Batacera, get the Linux build on here. But if you want a larger display with basically the rest of everything being the same, you can wait and get the Retroid Pocket 5, which is also up for pre-order now, shipping in October. And that one might be the one to go for. Now, if you want a little more power, a little more oomph, look at the AYN Odin and the Odin 2 Mini right here. If you are wanting Android, this these are gonna be the top performing Android handhelds that are going to really run circles even around the Retroid Pocket Mini and especially the T820 chipset in these later gen and Bernic handhelds like the 406V here. But this does blow away the previous Retroid Pocket 2S and the Retroid Pocket 4 or wait for the Ion Neo Pocket DMG. That's gonna also have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with a 4.3 display. Really the only big caveat, and this is just an issue with my unit, 
drove me a little nuts was just the fact that this SD card reader is not sitting flush and I couldn't get the SD card to sit in there very firmly. So I hope this is a pre-production unit and you all out there are not gonna be seeing that issue. But the rest of it, yeah, no other quality concerns or issues that I've come across so far in my testing. Now we're gonna wait for OTA updates like Android 13 so we can get more compatibility and maybe some more options because there were limited system options in here. Usually Retroid includes some sort of toolkit, toolbox, where you can go in and mess with everything. Uh, and so that might not be ready on here. Also, they're gonna be launching a brand new Retroid launcher version, all new fancy stuff uh, that will be available on here shortly as well. And if you're looking for accessories, check out our description because there are multiple accessories for this. There's a nice ergonomic back shell that you can put on here, protector. There's a full all glass screen protector that goes across the whole front you can get. There is a case, there are buttons. So check those out. This is pretty cool. We're kind of entering that next gen of retro devices. I do like this colorway they sent. I did order the SFC color, and so I'm excited for that. Having the all black front will make this screen and the bezels not be so big. Because the bezels, honestly, that's the other thing I suppose we should say is the bezels are a little bit big. This would have been nice again to get four inches there, but okay. Uh, and the design maybe isn't their prettiest they've ever made either. So a lot of people still cling on to the nostalgia factor that you get in the 2S, but you do lose the ergonomics there. But until the next one, I just wanna thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share to stay in the know for all of your favorite retro handhelds. And a special thanks once again to all of our channel members, patrons, and subs for making everything we do here possible. Perks with RH start for as little as $3 a month. Join us in our Discord to chat and play games. And join us, where we're gonna be sharing more content shortly on the Retroid Pocket Mini and the RP5. We should be getting unit for that soon, so stay tuned for content uh, from us there. And until the next one, this has been Stubbs with RH. Take care of those handhelds, everybody, and each other. Bye.